So yeah, I'll be talking about uh, server-side React and some of the optimizations uh, we had to do uh, to make React uh, uh, better for us. A um, little bit about myself. Uh, I am a software architect working uh, for Walmart Labs. This is a book we, uh, I co-authored about building isomorphic JavaScript apps, uh, which talks about some of the concepts behind what I, I'm going to present today. Um, so there's, uh, there's a statement that I, start, I like to start out with, is web app performance is important to our business. But in fact, this is something we could have probably said 10 years ago. Uh, I think the way we have to say it now is web app performance is absolutely necessary and extremely important uh, to our business. Uh, there's been studies to show that uh, users are, have an increasing demand when it comes to web app performance. Um, in 1999, uh, users, shoppers would have waited eight seconds for a page to load. Uh, but in 2010, 57% uh, of shoppers would leave the site if, if uh, the, the, it didn't load after three seconds. And then more recent studies show that uh, if a page took, two, uh, took six seconds, you would suffer a 40% conversion rate. In 2014, that same six seconds would, would suffer a 50% conversion rate. And this is a, a study that Walmart put together several years ago. That red line there, that's, uh, that's the conversion rates. And, uh, and this is the time it takes to, to load the page. As you can see, the conversion rate drops significantly as, as the page uh, takes longer to load. So for every one second of improvement, we, there's a, at least a 2% increase in conversion. So really, every, every second, every millisecond counts. And, um, this comes from the fact, some of this comes from the fact that we have a lot of more client-side rendering. Uh, and if this is a timeline of, of a, a site rendering on the client, you'll see that for the first five seconds, there's nothing to show the user. Uh, and then the, uh, once the JavaScript has initialized and starts rendering, then, then you see something on the client. So the perceived performance from, from the user's perspective is that they see nothing, they see a blank site, uh, and then there's this uh, downloading of the, the skeleton HTML, and then you download the JavaScript, then you have to evaluate the JavaScript, then you actually have to fetch the data calling the APIs, and then you can actually render the page. So what's nice about a web framework like React is you can run the same React component on, on the browser as well as the server. So on, on the server, you give it the data, uh, your, your data, and it gives you back the markup. So when the page request is made to the server, you return back the full HTML along with the JavaScript, your React JavaScript, to the browser, and then your browser can take it from there. So basically, your, your browser preloads with, with the HTML. So you render the full HTML on the server, return that HTML, and then you bootstrap uh, on the browser. So what that would look like is, you download that server-rendered HTML, and the user already sees something right away. The, the browser is already beginning to paint on, on, uh, on the screen uh, what, what the user can start seeing and can look for the Buy button and, 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 see the, and start reading about the products. In the background, you're downloading the JavaScript and you're evaluating the JavaScript, and then, so now your, your page becomes functional, fully functional. So this uh, uh, increases the kind of performance, uh, uh, the perceived performance that the user will see. But one of the issues we saw with React um, was running React on the server uh, caused the time to the f to first byte to, to, be, to be significantly high uh, compared to our legacy sites. And so we saw a three second time and from, from, the, from, uh, the, from the browser for even the first byte to come from the server. So this is a really bad user experience. But more importantly, it's bad for the business because there's been these studies that show as, uh, as you increase your, your, your time to first byte, your ranking on Google gets worse. So this is the, the, ranking, uh, the search ranking position at the bottom here and the time it takes to get to the first byte. So they did this study where they looked at several different uh, sites and um, looked at different search queries and there's, there seems to be a strong correlation between the time you get the, the first byte to the user uh, and your SEO ranking. So server-side React was great, but also it was sad at the same time. So, uh, and we, we started looking at it, and we, we took profiles on the server. And we saw that most of our time on the server was running React render to string. This is how you render a React component to, to a string. 
And uh, we obviously saw that most of the time being spent on the server uh, was, was spent in React. And so for large pages, this meant that React was blocking Node's event loop. And so this is going to starve incoming requests to the server. So we're going to start seeing uh, requests kind of returning slower uh, because our server is busy uh, executing a render to string. So we started doing some research and we found that, in fact, uh, Facebook uh, says that it, this was when React wasn't actually designed this way. Um, and we, and the Facebook themselves don't actually use uh, React on the server very heavily. So, um, uh, so we kind of had this, we saw this opportunity. And we ran some, you know, running some benchmarks, we saw that when we compared React to Mustache and Handlebars, which was our original templating language, there was a significant difference. And even we, if we applied best practices on React, we're able to reduce the time, but not as much as, as like a Mustache template would render on the server. So we started uh, thinking about how we can trade uh, uh, space for time. Uh, and basically, we came up with these two optimizations. Uh, one is the memoization or, or the caching, and the other is, is templatizing. So when a component is rendered on the server, uh, we would cache it so that subsequent requests to the server can just return a cached version of that component. And the other approach was when we couldn't cache every possible rendering of, of every possible component, we would templatize it and then use something like handlebars and mustache to, to render uh, from, from a template. So memoization is, is a concept that comes from functional programming, is if you give a, a certain input x and you run the function, you will get the, the same output. So given the same x, you'll get always the same output. Here's a hello world component, just as an example. If I pass in text to this component, I'm always going to get, uh, like, hello. If I send world to, to the component, I'm always going to get hello world out. So this is a, a slightly distinction between caching, because when people think about caching, they think about what's your time, what's your TTL, right? Uh, what, how long can you cache it for? This can be cached indefinitely, because Given that text, I'm always going to get the same, same output. Which was great for us at, at Walmart, because the way we did content uh, was we actually have a unique identifier for every piece of content on, on the page. So given that content ID, I can always know what exactly the markup is going to be. If that content, if the configuration behind this content changes, I'm going to get a new, uh, a new ID. So it was a very simple thing uh, for us to, to use. So we started peeling the onion uh, of React, um, and we came across this um, mount component function. Um, and basically, there's this React composite component where all the rendering to the markup happens. This is where the component is initialized. It's rendered uh, to markup. So we wanted to kind of plug into that so we can add this memoization piece. So we created a very simple library, and this is something we've uh, pushed out into, um, into the public GitHub. Uh, and we used, uh, there, uh, JavaScript is a dynamic language, and there's many ways to override things. Uh, the way we decided to do it was when anybody required any, in any code that required this uh, uh, composite component from React, uh, we would wrap it and return our version of it. And then that version, what we do is um, we look for that component name and we see if there's a, is a cache key to generate a cache for that. So cache key generation is a, is a configuration you pass into this library. And if we generate the key, uh, we look up in an in, a, in, a in memory cache. And if we get a cache hit, we got to do something a little extra here, because the markup has uh, data, uh, this React IDs. And the React IDs are different for every time React renders something. So, we have to replace that with the one that's come, that the, that's React wants to render with it. Uh, so we do this re regex to replace the, uh, the React, uh, uh, the React uh, ID. And then we just return that as, as from the cache. Otherwise, we actually call the mount component, and then we get the markup, and then we go ahead and cache that in, a, in an LRU cache in, in memory. So that's great for things that are, we can cache across uh, the site, like the header and footer. But if you have like a product grid, if we wanted to cache all the products on Walmart, um, that, would be, that would be very uh, a very large cache. 
So we decided to take this a step further and apply templatizing or templatization on top of components. So here's an example of a, of a component which renders a product. So you get the product name, you got its description, its price. And then the button, the add to cart button changes whether we actually have inventory or not. Uh, if, if there's no inventory, there's, the button changes. It's, not, it's like, uh, not add to cart, but something else. So what we ended up doing was thinking about how we can switch these props uh, with uh, template delimiters uh, like, like mustache uh, or handlebars. And then we compiled this React component, replacing those props with template, template delimiters. So the next time we fetch it from cache, we just apply the template delimiter, the, the template on top of the, 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 the props. So what that would look like is instead of having a React component, we would render that down to this, uh, which was, um, in, in our case, we used, uh, 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 we used underscores or low dashes uh, templating. Uh, and we just now have a templatized version of this component which is just HTML with, with simple uh, delimiters. And we would just apply that when we needed to render the component. So in this case, we, we, we have the same hook in, in, in React. Uh, we look at the component, we look at what attributes we want to templatize. And then we create a, uh, we templatize the props, meaning we take a prop, its value, and replace it with a delimiter. Um, and then we look up whether we have it in the cache. If we do, then we go ahead and process the template, and then just return that from the cache. Otherwise, we mount the component, compile uh, the markup so that it becomes like a template, cache it, and then run the template and, re and then return, uh, return the HTML. So let me just show you a demo of what this looks like. So I've, uh, I've taken one of our Walmart pages. This is uh, uh, our collection page, basically. it's a uh, it's an item that ha you can buy a bedding set, you buy different items. So this is a good example of this, this items, same items in the same page. And so without optimization, you can see that uh, I've instrumented our app so that it could print out the render to string time. So here it's 179 milliseconds to render this on the server. When I turn on uh, optimization, uh, I'm highlighting in blue everything that's coming from the cache. So uh, I've, I've uh, augmented the, the, the code to do this. But you can see the, the rendering time is, is, is significantly less. We're seeing eight, nine milliseconds versus hundreds of milliseconds. So this is uh, really significant because now uh, I can free up Node. Uh, um, basically, when we take profiles now of our Node servers, you see uh, the render to string is taking up a significant less amount of time on the server. So this uh, frees up our node server. It's not starving requests. And we're able to return uh, the page faster to the user. So uh, this is, uh, it's available now. Um, we just pushed it out actually, a few days ago. Love to get feedback from folks. And also, uh, if, if you want to try it out and let us know uh, if you're using React on the server, how this goes. Thank you. <laughs>